Good morning, afternoon, or evening, whatever it is for you. I'm Cycle, and this is Let's Play Train Simulator. As you can see, I have London to Brighton up, and as you can see down here, I have workshop scenarios uh, under as my uh, filter list because this is going to be our first look at London to Brighton. But I'm going to do something a little special here because I've been playing a couple routes already, kind of telling you what I'm doing. But this is a scenario that will actually tell you how to do what I'm doing. Uh, let me explain what I mean by that. We're going to do a short passenger service, about 15 minute drive. Let's actually scroll down. We can see I got a lot of workshop stuff for London to Brighton. I've got this, like I said, this is all workshop. I have some stuff for Great Western Mainline. I have Feather River Canyon. I have Edinburgh to Glasgow. I have all sorts of stuff here that are from the workshop. And I've unsubscribed from all this and the items are just still on my hard drive. They haven't actually been deleted yet. I'm going to have to fix this electric failure because I don't know what this uh, C train is. Obviously it's 377, but for some reason it's being labeled a C, so I'm going to have to fix that at some point. Here's one with the 166 model. Here's a 47. Uh, here's one with the Black 5 and probably the most popular steam loco in Train Simulator. But the one we're doing today is this one that has a check mark next to it. Passenger Tutorial Keyboard. Uh, as, this, as you see, it says Afternoon Driver. Today we're taking a look at how to tr control your train with the keyboard. It doesn't cover all the keyboard controls and it is only for the electric train, the 377. But it is a bit of a guide on how to use some of the uh, key controls. I'm going to try to explain a little more about that as we go here and uh, talk about some more things here. I have a rock rail train here too, apparently, scenario. I've seen his uh, channel before. He has a lot of stuff on there. So yeah, I've got, I'm going to have to explore all this other London the Brighton stuff at some point. Return ticket is a rock rail scenario. Um, the strike, um, urban service. You see that in Miami, West Palm Beach, and some others as well. We're not going to worry about all that. I'm just going to go ahead and go into the pasture tutorial today. That's what we're taking a look at. This will be a very, very short video, very, very short explanation. Then we'll head back to the uh, regular scenarios after that. So I will see you inside this scenario. Afternoon driver, let's start by getting into the cab and pressing the one key, then open the doors to let passers on with the T key. Okay, seriously, could you not have given us a better view of the train than behind a roof? Seriously? Ah, uh, there's the train. Okay, so I pressed the one key to get in the cab. Let's talk about some other shortcuts here. Two gives you a look outside the train. Three gives you a look at the back of the train. If you're already looking at the front of the train, I'll move you to the back of the train so you can see the back of the train. By the way, we have no uh, timetable on this. We're just doing some stops and that's it. There's no timetable, so we don't have to worry about time. That's why I'm taking my time here. So four will give us a look at, uh, well, it doesn't show anything right now. It's actually showing the front of the train behind the bridge back there. It's supposed to be a panoramic view that watches the train go by from a fixed camera point. So it's not really doing anything right now. Five gives you a passenger view, but you notice that the passenger view is kind of broken. I'm going to show you what I mean when I push eight and I can see all the passengers. So the passenger view doesn't work with this model apparently. Uh, you have to push eight to see the passengers. And then uh, you can obviously go through the train and uh, look at the rest of the passengers in the train and uh, see more passengers in the train and then you're outside the train. That's a view I'll show you in a second. So that's, past, that's our broken passenger view. Some work, some don't. Uh, number six gives you an overhead view, the coupling view. Number seven gives you a way overhead view. And number eight, as you saw, probably just saw me using a moment ago, lets you just go around wherever you want to go. So I'm at Earlswood Station. That's where we're starting today. And that's our train. And something you're going to notice as I'm doing these scenarios, I started doing, I start doing it more with scenarios on this route. I'm going, to, I'm going to make a point of trying to get more camera views outside of the station by showing you these kind of cameras. I'm not going to do it for this scenario, but I do, try and get things like this to give you some uh, look at the train as I stop at various stations, because this is mostly passenger runs. So I'm going to give you some views of the trains at each of the stations where I'm not actually talking myself about something else. So I'm going to give you a lot more of these views. There's a train coming in, by the way. That is, I'm pushing the F6 key to bring up the information that that's service 7. Uh, number nine, by the way, brings up the 2D map. So I can now see the entire route. I saw that train just coming in, service seven. And down here, there's probably nothing, but that's more stations down there. Down here, you can see uh, Safford Station. We're going to be continuing towards the north. We're going to go to uh, this. We're going to be making our way up to here, and we're going to be coupling to this train eventually. So uh, Service 3 is coming along as well, and it's going to be coming to meet us. So our next stop is obviously going to be at Red Hill, which is the next station along the line. That's where we're going to be heading. So let's go ahead and get back in the cab. We'll push 9 to get out of this view. We're going to open the doors right now, and we're going to let uh, passengers on. Let's set up our train as we were kind of directed to here. We're going to push W to set up the AWS. I'm going to use Q 
to reset the AWS, which sometimes it's easier just to click the exclamation point here. But uh, you know, I'll, I, that's, you want to use the keyboard shortcut if, if you can because it's easier. But except when it's not easier, uh, we have a double yellow signal. That means we're going to have some kind of um, divergence or some kind of stoppage or divergence ahead. Great! Now that the computers are on board, let's get moving. Push the reverse. I did this. So uh, we're going to use uh, we're going to hear loud buzzing noise. It's not saying that we're going to use A and B to uh, accelerate, which is kind of silly because we're going to do that before we're told to do that. So. Um, there it is. Now that I've done it, move forward by pressing A. You can slow down and brake with D. Should you hear a loud beep from the AWS, press Q to acknowledge it. Stop at Red Hill P2, which is platform two. Take note of the speed limits in the graph at the bottom of the HUD. It's important you follow these. You can also drive without the HUD and use the uh, information in the upper corner there with the F5 shortcut. Uh, F3 and F4 disables the respective HUD. So there's the F3, there's the F4. And you can disable each one and just use the F5 information here. And you can just follow the speed on that. You can follow the throttle on that. You can follow other information. It's not really big text there. So because the text is not that big, I tend to prefer using the HUD because the HUD gives you a much better view of the information. And you can also see what time it is for following a timetable. That is one of the services. We'll bring up another one on, uh, we'll bring up the label on another one later on to show you that the services are really nothing specially named here. So there's our alert to uh, something coming up up ahead. We now have a single yellow aspect with a divergence signal here. This means we're gonna be going one track over to the left. So we have to be prepared to go one track over the left. I have to get down to 20 in a hurry. I was not prepared for that. So we will do that in a hurry. And I got low enough now that I can just milk it the rest of the way for right now. I'm down to 20 now. We're gonna be coming to a stop at this platform here. So we've now moved one track over as you saw. So that was Earlswood that we started at. We've now moved up to Red Hill Station. There's our queue. We have another signal coming up ahead. So I'm going to pull into this platform. I'm going to come to a stop about now. We normally want to stop at the four car stop. So you kind of want to watch for that in the corner because the four car stop is right there. You can see it right there in the side wind of the window. I'm going to come to a full fuller service application now. And as you can see, I've stopped right at the stop sign right at the sign. That's where you want to be, right at that sign. You can't really see it very well, but right at that sign is where you want to be. I stopped just before it, that's perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and open the doors. Passengers are now boarding. I'll move the brake back up to uh, 33%. Now normally I will take the opportunity at the stations along this route to get you some camera views. So I might go ahead and just, for example, punch, punch back here and get a shot of the train from here. I could do something like that. Didn't want to do that, but thank you. I could remove... Well done, there's a strand surface at Mersum. Let's go save the day. Continue on to Mersum. So I'll be able, I'll be showing you uh, views like this as part of the uh, London to Brighton uh, pack. I'm going to do this with other passenger services as well. Once in a while, I'll do it with freight services as well. I'm starting to get in the habit of doing these kinds of things. Uh, and I... I think it's a good way to show off some of the scenery in the dip, in the various parts of the route. So you can see, for example, the uh, area over there. I can set up the train view to show that area behind there. So if I come over here, now you get to see the nice neighborhood behind the train. And how's that for a camera view, huh? Let's move ahead. So as you see, we've got our task completed so far. Merstam is 1.7 miles away. There is a red signal ahead. Normally you're required to stop at these until they change. I'm going to not make sure I don't speed. Request to pass it by pressing tab. After you're passing the preceding amber signal, the signalman will let you pass as you're coupling to the train ahead. Proceed slowly into Merstam. When coupling, try to do it slower than 5 miles per hour so you don't damage the train. Roger. Well, not really Roger because she's apparently sitting next to me, whoever this is uh, driving the train with me, he or she. And 75 is now our speed limit. So I will go ahead and get up to speed a little bit here. 
Our next signal is an amber. That was a double yellow that we just passed. So our next signal is indeed going to be an amber signal. Now typically when we have an amber signal, we're gonna slow down and stop at the red signal. Because we have a special situation where we're gonna be passing the signal, I'm just gonna be pressing tab to pass it. I will go a little bit faster into the uh, MRSM area, but I will be slowing down before the station. So I'm gonna get past this signal. There we go. So the signal has been passed, I can press tab anytime. I'm gonna get a little closer so I don't run the risk of my uh, permission expiring, but I will start slowing down now because I'm going faster than I thought. So let's slow down a little bit right now. So I'm close enough now that I'm gonna request a tab pass at this point. Request to pass approved. I'm gonna start slowing down now anyway, even though I'm allowed to pass. There, now the AWS does not know that we're allowed to pass a signal, but because we've been given permission to pass that panel will be deactivated for us. So we are, so the panel that you see on the uh, track, actually this one doesn't have it. So we're gonna just proceed. Now I, now I get the difference just as I'm doing this. This one uh, doesn't have a panel next to it to protect the signal. Uh, if you see a panel next to it, then that signal is uh, protected. And so you don't speed past it and it triggers an emergency break. This one does not have that. The ones that have that have a shunt signal built into the signal. So that deactivates that panel and you're able to proceed past that panel. This one does not have that, so the signal just doesn't change. There's nothing to really prevent there. I literally just learned that right now after having recorded all the other scenarios. How's that for uh, learning, huh? You learn something every day driving these trains. So I'm coming into the station now. I know the train is about halfway along the platform, so I'm going to start slowing down again right now. You can see another service sitting, about just leaving right now. Service 4 is sitting here. Now I'm coming a little slower than I intended to now, so I'm going to put the throttle back on. I'm going to hear a ding right now. That means the next signal is green. So I'm down to 10, I'm gonna slow down a little further as we get closer to the train. Now I will do that. I'm gonna get down to about two, I believe. That's a good speed. Well, three, I'll take three. Now I'll take two. Okay, moving along. I feel like I'm driving a spaceship at this point. Proceeding, coming upon, train. Capture. Great, now that the passenger's on board, like that. Uh, you heard a different, different, it's a workshop sir. I'm not going to criticize that one. Tonal beep when you came in. That was the all clear beep giving the next signal screen, which I just set. We need to shut down this cab now, and we're going to be told to do that in a moment anyway, but uh, I'll do it now. I'm going to bring up the F4 head. Now notice that uh, next to where we are right now, not the view I wanted, but thank you. Wow, I got... Apparently it's not going to give me a good view in front of the train anymore, which is very unfortunate. It seems that my view has been stuck now in this uh, far away view, which is a little bit buggy in my opinion. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, get ourselves into that front cab. We know that we're going to the in the forward position right now. That is behind us. This is forward. We want that green signal, not the red signal back there, but the green signal over here. So we want to go this way. Let's go that way. So in order to do that, I'm going to get back in my train. I'm going to bring up the F4 HUD like that. I'm going to move two in, now that this train cab is shut down, I'm going to move two in that direction. Now keep in mind, you can go the wrong side of the train. That will go the other way. So we want to move back to the front of the train here. And you know, some weird graphical glitches we did that for some reason, don't know why. But now that we're in the correct cab, I'm going to return to my normal HUD. I'm going to set up this cab. AWS reset is done. We have one more stop at Colston South, as you can see. So we're going to go ahead and move forward. There's another service coming in. 
service five. So this is the train that we had to save and now all of a sudden we're driving the train that we saved. Now we can go up to 80. And you know what, let's see how far close to 80 we can get before Colston South appears. Let's see if we can get this up to speed here. Get this bad boy purring. So we're gonna hear another green signal as we go in the tunnel here. There it is, you just heard the green. So uh, we're going, by the way, oh, that's the pass review, whoops. Let's do an overhead view here. We're going to, uh, we might have already passed by the M25. The M25 is near Merstham Station. Merstham Station is right near the M25. The M25 is that roadway that circles London, England. So it's a 110 or so kilometer roadway. I think about 106, 14, 116, somewhere in that range. It circles London, England completely. So um, it just it's just an endless road, basically. And there are gas stations along. You can pull off and get some gas periodically if you need to. Get some food at, at the service center. So if you have nothing better to do than drive on the highway all day, you can drive on the highway all day. Not right now because of COVID, but um, typically you can just drive around all day if you want to and get some practice driving on the left side of the road and not the right. <laughs> Unless you live in the UK and you're used to driving on the left side of the road, in which case, hey, all power to you. If you want to drive in America or in Canada, drive on the right. If you want to drive in France, drive on the right. So this is the Merson Tunnel we're about to exit now. We're getting close to our 90 speed limit here. There's another service coming in. You see the label coming up, service six. And we're up to 87 miles per hour. Coles and South is starting to appear now. Can I get all the way to 90? Let's see. Can I go all the way to 90? You bet I can. I might even speed. I can even speed at this point, so I'm gonna take the throttle off. I'm a mile out, so I don't need to slow down quite yet, but I will need to slow down soon. Now, as you see, there's no timetable to arrival time. I'm not gonna fail because of time. You hear that signal there. We have a double yellow up ahead. I have to start slowing down anyway. But if we uh, didn't have that, but if we were continuing on past the station, we would be stopping or slowing down for the double yellow anyway at this point. I'm gonna go ahead and move it to a level two brake application at this time. That might actually get me into the station. I might get in the station with that, let's see. Oh, not bad. Not bad, as I pass over another roadway here or something. Okay, now I'm gonna take the brakes off a little. I'll actually remove them completely and coast in the station. Didn't give myself enough time for that slowdown, so I'm gonna move in just a little bit further, get fully into the station, and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, find out if I can stop the train. The next signal is a yellow. We're going to get alerted to that right now. You can see the repeater is saying a proceed aspect up ahead, but yellow is what the signal is. So, yeah. So as you see, our task is showing there. We have, now the eight car stop, I think was somewhere on that side over there. In fact, that's the four car stop over there, coincidentally enough. So we're going to open the train right now. Yeah, that was the four car stop. I didn't go far enough for the eight car stop, but you know what? That's the six car stop. That's the eight car stop. I'm not fussy and there's no other stop behind it. So yeah, this this uh, platform only serves short trains at South Croydon. So yeah, that's the end of this scenario. Let's get one more shot of the train here without the task list. There you go. Well done, driver. I'll take over from here. I wish you the best of luck in your career. And uh, I can't hide the task list anymore, but you can see that all the check marks are there. We're done. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just say, like the video if you like what you saw here today. Make sure you subscribe to the channel to see all the one of the bright videos as I release them. There's gonna be, uh, I'm gonna give you information on my timetable for this right now. I'm gonna do eight of the scenarios for right now. And I've already listed on the, um, on the, um, at the end of the eight star, I already talked about the next place I'm going to be going to after that. 
uh, hit is in America. Uh, so I'm going to be heading back to that. Then I'm going to be coming back to London to Brighton to finish these scenarios in this class 3770. The reason for that is I don't want it to be too repetitive because the next place I'm going, there's a lot of things to do there as well. So I'm trying to not make it too repetitive. I'm trying to uh, give a little bit of variety from time to time. At some point, I'm going to try and get in a German route in here as well. I just haven't figured out the right route to use for a German route yet to start off because most of them have a lot of trains on them. Uh, but I'm trying to pick one that has no more than two or three trains to start with. I'm kind of got down to two options right now. So I'm going to be trying to work that in at some point. But I have enough to do right now. Uh, I don't have as many German routes as UK and US and then of course a Canadian route. Uh, so I'm going to be doing a lot of UK driving. and I'm going to be trying to come back to the US as much as I can as well. US and Canada as well. So um, you're going to get to see a lot of uh, those two areas. Occasionally I'm going to go to China. Occasionally I'll go to Japan. Uh, which I don't know if I have anything in Japan. Oh, no, I do have one. I do have one in Japan. The Forest Rail uh, set, I think, is from Japan. So I do have that. So you're going to see other places periodically. Um, I might look up some uh, freeware items. I know there's an Australia we're going to want to try driving at some point. Uh, and uh, there might be other projects I'm going to want to show off from time to time. So you're going to see those as I come across something I want to try driving. You'll get to see it. So make sure to come back. By subscribing to the channel for seeing all the London Brighton and other scenarios I post here. You can also go back and see the uh, suburban Glasgow and um, Sherman Hill scenarios I've already played. And uh, yeah, that's really all I have to say at this point. Make sure you come back to see all London Brighton and everything else to follow as well. I will see you then. For now, I'm Cyclone. And our next scenario will be the Electrostar tutorial scenario. I'll see you for that. Have a wonderful day, evening, or night, whatever it is for you at your part of the world, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.